Hydrohalogenation of an alkyne is a reaction that takes place between an alkyne and an HX molecule. HX molecules are typically HCl or HBr. This reaction is very similar to hydrohalogenation of an alkene. It's not identical, but it's very similar. In this reaction, we are going to be combining two equivalents of the HX molecule with our alkyne. And if you recall from this reaction with the alkenes, we get a Markovnikov addition of the HX molecule. So we first we put the hydrogen on the carbons of the alkene and the hydrogen prefers to go to the carbon that already has the most hydrogens present. I'm going to draw this HX in a different color. So the HX hydrogen will go there and the halogen will go right here. And then we add our second equivalent of HX, again, following Markovnikov's rule. So the second hydrogen goes onto the carbon that already has the most hydrogens present right here, which means that the second halogen will go onto the other carbon. This, so this reaction follows Markovnikov's rule. The only way that this reaction is different from hydrohalogenation of an alkyne, or excuse me, alkene, is that we have no rearrangement in this reaction, which means that this reaction proceeds via a different mechanism than the one that we see with an alkene. There's never a carbocation formed, if that, which is why we don't see any rearrangement. Um, one thing to note about the hydrohalogenation of an alkyne is that it is typically only done with terminal alkynes. It is not impossible to do this with an internal alkyne, but it's not useful to do it with an internal alkyne. Uh, with a terminal alkyne, remember a terminal alkyne is one where the carbon-carbon triple bond is at the end of a chain. So with a terminal alkyne, we have one hydrogen that's already on the alkyne, and that one hydrogen helps guide the location of the first incoming hydrogen and then the second incoming hydrogen as well. So doing this reaction with a terminal alkyne guarantees that we're only going to make one type of product in this reaction. If we do this with an internal alkyne, and again, it is possible, it's not that the internal alkyne cannot react, but if we do this with an internal alkyne, because we don't have any hydrogens initially present on the alkene, we don't have Markovnikov's rule helping to guide the placement of the hydrogen as it comes in, so some of the hydrogens will end up on one of the carbons of the alkyne and some of the hydrogens will end up on the other carbon and this results in a mixture of products which is never ideal. So again this is typically only done with terminal alkynes. Now we can do this reaction in the presence of peroxide just like with an alkene. When we're doing this reaction in the presence of a peroxide notice that I've specifically wrote HBr and not HX. That is because this reaction actually doesn't work with HCl. So it only works with HBr. And then the peroxide, if you recall, this could be any sort of peroxide. So there could be hydrogens on there or one hydrogen with one R group. Any one of those would work. This gives us an anti-Markovnikov addition, meaning that the incoming hydrogen will go to the carbon atom that has the least number of hydrogens. The um, anti-Markovnikov addition of the HBr molecule is typically only done once. So I am drawing, draw this HBr in a different color. So the HBr's hydrogen will go anti-Markovnikov, which means the bromine goes over here. And what we do see is no control over forming the cis or trans isomers in this reaction. 
So some of them will give us the, the E product and some of them will give us the Z product. I'm, uh, I'm not going to label them cis or trans because it's really going to depend on what the R group is in this reaction. Uh, this reaction is only done, like I said, it's only done with one equivalent of HBr. So only done with HBr and only one HBr, not two. Again, it can add a second HBr molecule, but we don't have Markovnikov's rule to help control where that second uh, HBr molecule will go because we have two hydrogens present. So we end up again with a bad mixture of products and we're already getting enough of a mixture of products. So for this, we have anti-Markovnikov. We also have no rearrangement. And in terms of stereochemistry, we will make both the E and the Z isomers, or cis and trans. And also, for the same reason, only done in the lab, we only do this with terminal alkynes because we want to have a hydrogen present to help control the placement of the bromine and the incoming hydrogen in the product.